Welcome to this video in which we are going to analyze some of the movements of the technique of Vicente Amigo. Now I've made about a handful of these technique analysis videos so far and I really enjoy making them and I want to keep making them and I really enjoy uh, people's comments too and people sharing their insight and things that they see and things that they know about these amazing players. Uh, I kind of always did imagine these videos being a bit of a sounding board in that way, you know, for people to share information. So I really uh, love that. And sometimes I get overwhelmed when I'm thinking about, you know, choosing who to cover next because there are so many great players and, you know, it's like I don't want to leave anybody out. So who do I choose? So I was feeling this way before I started making this video and I just took a moment and I said, okay, Who's someone that you just love listening to and really admire as a musician? And immediately, the first name that popped into my head was Vicente Amigo. So I thought, okay, that, that settles it. That's who we're going to look at next. Vicente Amigo is one of my very favorite musicians on the planet. And before we get into, you know, some of the nitty gritty stuff that we'd like to look at here and... Um, really try and look at specific things. There are a couple of general things that I interpret when I watch and listen to him play that I just really admire and they really come off very strongly. Um, one is his body movement and the second thing is kind of his example of playing the guitar from being in the flow state. You know, whatever you want to call that, being one with the guitar or you know, feeling and not thinking or you know, the subconscious, uh, you know, however you want to word that. Uh, just being able to be in the space where you want to be, and then the rest of us get to hear what that sounds like. So his body movement, I think, is really interesting because a lot of times when I see someone play the guitar and they are moving a lot, and they are making a lot of facial expressions, uh, I am irritated by that. And I just think, well, I just wish you'd quit and knock all that off and, and just play your dang instrument. Um, it's just honestly what, what I think in my mind when I see this happen a lot of the time. But sometimes I watch someone who moves, who makes facial expressions, and I don't think that. I just, you know, it's not anything that bothers me, and it's like I'm just going right along with them. So when you watch Vicente Amigo, there's a decent amount of movement in his body. There are definitely facial expressions that he makes. But he is one of these people that, you know, I never have felt like it got in the way of the music whatsoever. In fact, it just seemed to be part of it. Like they are one and the same. So I spent some time thinking about why that is. You know, why are you irritated? You know, I told myself. <laughs> With certain people and other people, it's like you don't even notice. And the only conclusion that I came to is that I guess we all feel like we have a good BS detector. You know, <laughs> like you feel like you know when someone is being genuine or if someone is putting on a show or, you know, just wanting to show something in particular. So when I interpret movement as acting, then I'm irritated because, you know, I'm not watching a movie, I'm not watching a drama, a TV series, okay? I want to hear music and I want to hear who people are. Uh, so I'm irritated. But when it seems like the movements are one and the same with the musical execution, you know, like you wouldn't be able to separate them and that someone is just being who they are and they would play this way if they're playing in front of 10,000 people or they would play this way if they're playing on a desert island, you know, by themselves, surrounded by a bunch of coconuts, you know, then you feel like, okay, this is who they are and it actually goes with exactly what they're doing and they shouldn't do it any other way. So there's a clip here of Vicente playing when he's much younger. I'm not sure, but he looks like he may be a teenager. So it's interesting here that I noticed him moving less. You know, yeah, there's still some movement. He's definitely into the music, okay? It's not like he's it's not like he's playing like a square peg, all right? But there's certainly less movement. And him being a kid, you know, maybe he's not as comfortable as he would be later. I, I don't know. Maybe he's trying to make sure he's not making any mistakes because he's, like, playing on TV. That's what I would be thinking about. <laughs> um, but it's interesting to see. And then, of course, later on, 
you see a lot more movement. He looks um, just absolutely comfortable. And now it just seems like, yep, this is exactly who I am, and this is how I'm going to execute my pieces, and that's just the way it's going to be. So, really interesting progression, I think. And, you know, I can certainly think this way. I think a lot of people can, where we think a certain amount of technical practice will allow us to say, yeah, I can move however I want, or I can look this way or that way, and that will make all these things come together. But, you know, I believe people like Vicente Amigo, because they have done all the technical practice, it's easy to put it on that. But I believe that they've actually discovered the way that they need to play, you know, along with that. You know, all the technical years and years of study uh, I'm sure it will help you do that, but I don't believe that it does it for you. I think you have to kind of find your way in that area. Um, so I just think it's really admirable when you see people that uh, kind of have found their way and, uh, and know how to be very comfortable on their instrument. And one more thing about, you know, Vicente Amigo exemplifying this flow state. There's this video clip in which uh, it looks like he's sitting like in his backyard or, or somebody's backyard at, at their house. I don't know. And uh, he's trying out several guitars that Cordoba have made for him. And there's three guitars, so he will play some on one and then he'll stop and then he'll put the guitar down and he'll switch to a different guitar. And there's this amazing moment, I think, that happens. He, he switches guitars, so he like finishes up, you know, a falsetta on the previous one. Then he puts it down and then he switches to the next one. He checks the tuning real quick and then he starts to kind of get back into the music but he he starts to stutter and stumble and you know dare I say make some mistakes. Okay. And it takes him a few seconds and then like he starts to play and it's like a train slamming back down onto the tracks and then being perfectly in sync after that. And to me, it's just like, I mean, how many of us approach the guitar from a very technical standpoint? But what I saw here was he is just trying to get back to the flow state. You know, he obviously had to stop it because he changed the, gu the guitars. And then when he starts to play again, he's not there. He's not there for a second. Wait, there it is. And we're off. And then it's like back to flawless execution. And he's moving. And then from then on out, everything is just very musical. So I think that's absolutely amazing. And if you can do that, then it's just like, it seems to be the way to play and, and the way to be. Uh, so check out this clip. Uh, all these videos I use footage from are linked in the description below so you can go listen to the performances. Um, but I thought this was really amazing. You know, if you see him play a concert, I think we take for granted that he's in the flow state the entire time, uh, as amazing as that is. But you really see it here, and you see the slight moment where he's out of it and he's looking for it, and things aren't working, and then all of a sudden, there you go, and, and he's off. One of my favorite things about Vicente is his guitar sound, his tone. Um, I think his tone is really unique and very different than a lot of flamenco players. He has a, a richness and a fullness to a lot of his sounds that I don't hear quite as often in flamenco. And, you know, you can see when he plays that his thumbnail is definitely on the shorter side. It's certainly not as long as, as a classical player's nail typically would be, and a lot of flamenco players too. But I kind of had trouble seeing how long his, his other nails were when he would play in performance. But then I stumbled across this video interview of him, and there's this shot of his hands. And I thought, oh, this is exactly what I'm looking for. So you can see in this shot how short his nails are. They are extremely short. And definitely they're shaped. I mean, definitely there's a design uh, that he has for them, but very, very short nails. And I feel like you hear this in his sound, you hear a lot more flesh. And his technique seems to have a lot to do with how short his nails are. 
So now getting a little bit more specific, I want to look at how he holds the guitar because I always think that's an interesting thing. So first thing that sticks out to me is that the guitar is tilted forward. I think this is a good shot to show that you can see the camera seems to be pretty much, you know, level. So you can see how much the guitar is tilting forward. And I have seen other flamenco guitarists uh, hold the guitar this way. And with the guitar like this, you know, I was looking at kind of how his limbs are fixated around it. So Vicente Amigo is a long limbed person. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. But you can see, you know, the guitar sits relatively high up on his chest. Uh, his right leg that he crosses, uh, you can see the knee sticking way out just because he's he's got long limbs, right? So from straight on, it's like the first thing you'd see is the knee. And then the guitar is, is uh, tucked away behind it. Uh, his right arm is kind of sticking straight out from the shoulder. And so you can see he's got the, the flamenco leverage going on there from the shoulder and very long arm. And then it comes way down from the elbow uh, down to the wrist. And, you know, it looks like his right arm rests on top of the, or on the side rather of the guitar most of the time. But you can see a lot of the times it's not resting. You know, it certainly does at times, but then uh, it's like he will activate the shoulder and his arm is very close to the side of the guitar, but it's actually kind of hanging out above there. So it looks like a totally different type of engagement uh, when that shoulder kicks in the gear and lifts the arm. His left arm too is kind of fascinating to me. It, you know, his arms are so long that he can hold the guitar, you know, relatively high up into his chest. And if his left shoulder is just absolutely relaxed, he can just bend his elbow and his long forearm just perfectly reaches where the fingerboard is. In general, just visually, when I watch him play, you know, with his limbs sticking out everywhere, it looks a little bit unorthodox to me, but then kind of looking at how things work, it just couldn't make more sense. So continuing on with his anatomy, uh, Vicente Amigo has what you would call very long fingers. <laughs> I mean, uh, his fingers are very long. For the fretboard hand, you can see in this passage here just all the stretching. And if you play the guitar, maybe if you played you know music like this, you can just feel uh, all the stretching that he's doing here and how effortless he makes it look. But when you kind of start counting the, counting the frets and seeing how far his pinky finger can get out there, also seeing his first finger do a decent amount of stretching. I mean, he's kind of stretching all over the place. You can't play the guitar sitting like this unless you can reach everything. So if you can't reach everything, you've got to hold it differently. You've got to hold the guitar so you can reach everything. But when you have fingers like him, you know, he can find a way to reach it looks like pretty much uh, darn near anything. As far as the plucking hand goes, and we're gonna talk more later on about some of these techniques that it looks like he's doing, but I just see leverage, you know. From what I understand about physics is, you know, the same mechanism that's longer, that moves at the same amount of speed is gonna generate more force. So, you know, what does that mean? Well, it means if he's doing um, a big apoyando from the, from the big joint, well, that's gonna be stronger with less effort. It means if he's doing free stroke and he's plucking up into the, into the palm, uh, mainly from the middle joint, it means that's gonna be, it's gonna be more easy, it's gonna be stronger because, you know, that mechanism is also longer. So uh, his long fingers, without a doubt, come into play when you're talking about his technique. And now I want to talk a little bit about his plucking hand thumb because I think it's quite fascinating. So just look at the way that his thumb is shaped. I mean, is this what you call like a hitchhiker thumb? Um, it is 
extremely curled and bent back. Just like when most of us just hold our thumb out straight and it just like barely goes back, his curls way back. And that's very different looking. But watching him use it is, is quite fascinating to me because he uses the shape of his thumb to do so many different things. Um, and then, so here's what I mean. Most people when they play, like nine out of 10, either classical or flamenco guitarists, their plucking hand thumb will go in front of their index finger. I think just most people, their anatomy works that way. That's what a lot of us are taught. Um, you know, I myself usually teach that, but I'm always on the lookout because every once in a while you'll run across someone who that doesn't work for. Uh, I have a friend that plays really well and her thumb kind of lines up almost like exactly with her eye finger. I don't really know how she deals with it, but she, but she does and it's very natural for her. But occasionally you see people do things where they're, you know, people play in such a way in which their thumb goes behind the eye finger, okay? Such as lute players. So I found this little clip of uh, someone demonstrating lute technique. And lutenists do all kind of things that are big no-nos for, you know, guitar technique. They do things like bracing with the the little finger on the top of the guitar, and then you know the thumb going over uh, the thumb going under the index finger rather. Um, but they just play this way. The thumb always goes under the index, and it's not it's not like a disadvantage for them. It's not like oh, only some people can do this. People that use traditional lute technique. This is how they play. So it's kind of interesting to me, and I'm always on the lookout for people that just seem to move more naturally this way. But it seems that most people predominantly are either one or the other. But what I found after watching Vicente Amigo play is that his thumb will do both of these things. Sometimes it passes in front of his index finger it looks like that happens probably most of the time, like if he's doing, you know, general free stroke type of stuff or whatever, but sometimes it will pass behind the index finger. You know, I couldn't really signify like, oh, well, this is when he goes over with the thumb or this is when he goes behind. Um, I couldn't pick out anything like that, but I definitely did notice that he will do both. And I think it's really amazing. He seems to use the very unique shape of his thumb to its full advantage. And I would describe his way of playing as having a constantly moving hand position with his plucking hand. I mean, it's just, it's always on the move. It's always in a very secure position, but just constantly changing between those positions, right? So it seems like the thumb is just kind of filling in and picking up the slack wherever it needs to. And if it can go over eye and, and, and pluck that way, great. If it's kind of lined up with it, fine. If it's behind eye, because that's how his hand is, then that works too. So I thought that was really interesting in his thumb being able to do all those different kinds of strokes. So now I want to talk about what to me seems like a very specific technique that Vicente Amigo does that I don't really think I've seen before. I can't think of anyone else that does it. Uh, let me know if you know someone else that does this. So I was hearing this over and over in his playing, this certain effect, and I started to think, what is that? Because it sounded like an AMI arpeggio. But AMI arpeggios are predominantly played with free stroke, right? By most players. But it didn't sound like that. And I thought, what is he doing? So then I started to look for shots, and then I finally found some shots. And what it looks like to me is AMI Apoyando Arpeggio, which I, I can't really say I've seen before. I've seen people make an exercise out of doing like rest stroke arpeggios, but it wasn't something that I you know, really took seriously. But this is very serious um, because it sounds really great and I think it's an amazing technical achievement and obviously it's something uh, that he does a lot. So what I think this is, 
And then I did find several angles where I thought, okay, this definitely looks like what he is doing. He's just doing an A in my arpeggio with those three fingers on, on different strings, but he's doing it rest stroke or apoyando. And in this clip here was the first thing that kind of clued me in because he's doing it. The angle here is from the front, but look at his hand position. His hand position is, is more back. It's like a, it's like an apoyando type hand position. So I thought, well, that doesn't really look like free stroke. It looks more like rest stroke. And then I did find some of these other angles where uh, there's really good camera work, by the way. Uh, big hats off to these camera people because I love this shot where you can see really well what the plucking hand is doing. And to me, this looks like he's doing AMI, but it's apoyando. You know, hand position wise, maybe it's like slightly in between his general free stroke hand position and when he does picado or something like that. Uh, maybe more on the picado side. But uh, you can see with his thumb, you know, in this instance at least, he's pressing down on the sixth string. His thumb is uh, kind of going straight down, much like uh, some people do when they play picado. And then his, what's interesting to me here is his A finger has quite a bit of movement. So he will throw out the A finger, at least at times. Maybe those are the accents. And then it looks like his M and I fingers, they have much less movement. But the sound, you know, it equates to, you know, of course these arpeggios are very fast, but the uh, veracity, the fierceness of the sound is kind of just, it has a different flavor to it. So this is something that stuck out to me, you know, orally. I heard this and I thought, I, you know, what is he doing? It kind of sounds like something that I've heard before, but I've never heard it produced this way. And so it turns out it's the, the good old AMI Apoyanto arpeggio. So, you know, give that one a try the next time you, you do some work on the guitar. So next, uh, all the shots that we have here are of Vicente Amigo doing Picado. And I want to talk about what uh, I can observe from his Picado technique. So, you know, in general, it looks like well, for one thing, Vicente Amigo's joints seem to be extremely flexible. And I've noticed this is very different amongst person to person. For instance, in this shot here, uh, he's doing something like a technique that we just talked about. So he's doing apoyando, but it's from a little bit more of a free stroke hand position. And if we freeze it, look how bent back his tip joint is. Uh, I mean, that is a very, very uh, flexible joint. So this is no doubt something that he uses to his advantage when he plays, right? And this is a really interesting shot because you can see the, the knuckle is activated, but also look how activated the other two joints are. <laughs> the middle joint and then the tip joint. So you see a lot of that uh, when he does an apoyando or maybe a few notes here and there. When he kicks his piccato into gear, it looks like his fingers, as they increase speed, they become more straight fingered. Um, and it's, it's interesting because I feel like with some strokes, you know, as we watch it in slow motion and, you know, you can really try and analyze the movement of each stroke. Some strokes, it's like the finger ends up pretty straight some strokes he does still have that, you know, almost hyperextended, uh, for a lot of people it would be hyperextended, uh, tip joint, um, like that joint is just fully flexed. So I certainly can't tell, you know, what the design is in terms of uh, when the finger is straighter with less movement in the middle and tip joints and when uh, those are just allowed to flex more. But in general, it looks like when he kicks into piccato, the finger gets at least a bit straighter. Um, his thumb is firmly anchored on the sixth string and looks like it is moving. Uh, you can see the string kind of moving, so it looks like it is applying some pressure there and being used to push that way. You can see his pinky sticking out, so 
not to the most extreme degree that you'll see, but definitely a decent amount. You can see it sticking out there to, uh, to help with the technique. And then his A finger, it looks like it is sticking out slightly. The middle, the middle knuckle of the A finger is a little bit in front of the M finger, and it looks like it's just moving uh, sympathetically with the M finger along with the way that it moves. And the last thing I'll mention about his piccato technique is something that I kind of felt like I started to notice, but then I really felt like you could see from this shot from the front. And that is when he does piccato and he kicks into hyperspeed, his hand does this wiggle. It has this side to side movement that you, you don't usually see. And uh, I think that's really fascinating, you know. His, the way that his technique looks and then, you know, the sound results that he gets, it just feels like there's a whole lot of pushing of the strings happening. So I'm imagining it makes sense if you are as on top of the strings as he is, that for ultimate power, you would literally turn your hand some uh, to get the full leverage. So. This is something I'm definitely going to experiment with. I've always kind of just imagined keeping the hand stable and then moving the fingers. But I feel like what I'm seeing here is his hand literally going from side to side, just extremely fast. So I thought this was really, really interesting. And you can see it in some other shots, uh, just kind of like a slight wiggle. But I thought the shot that picked it up the best was actually this shot from the from the front, which I'm usually not a fan of, but in this case, uh, you really get a good view of uh, this wiggle that he's got going on. Now, we really haven't mentioned the fretboard hand much, but there was one thing that I did observe that I thought was really interesting. You know, uh, Vicente Amigo definitely uses his bendy joints to his advantage. He'll do things like, uh, you know, bend his first fingertip joint uh, to make little mini bars and things like that. He seems to do that a lot. But I noticed with his fourth finger that he does this retracting type move. And I've seen this before. You know, some people don't ever do a move like this, but some people do it and it's very much worked into their technique. So in this passage, I feel like you can really see this at work. So. When his fourth finger is is needed to play a note, okay, it comes down and it plays wherever it needs to, okay, no, no problem. A lot of times when it's not playing a note, it curls back, you know, almost into the palm and it retracts back to this kind of like waiting curled position. Uh, it's really interesting. So sometimes when it's not doing anything, it will curl back, like almost as far as it can go. And at the end of this passage, he uh, plays out a chord that's held out and he doesn't need his fourth finger. And it's just hanging out there in that in that state. I mean, it's, it's ready to go. And it's obviously worked into his technique because when he does need it, you know, he never misses with it. It's never like, oh, well, he missed a note. That's because it's, you know, his fourth finger because it was curled. Like, like, no, <laughs> it's always wherever he needs it to be right when he needs it to be there. But when it's not being used, it will do this. You know, I call it a retract. Um, it's like its own move, but obviously he's so comfortable doing that, that his finger can be way back there, which when you're talking about distance from the fingerboard, that's a pretty long way to go. I mean, when you're talking about distances on the guitar, it's like centimeters, you know? Like a centimeter is adds a lot of distance if you add a centimeter. So that's like a few inches that he's adding there. But it just seems to be something that, well, all I can imagine is that it's the most comfortable way for him to play. I just always think it's amazing when you see something a little bit unorthodox, but it just worked to perfection in somebody's technique. I just think it's really interesting to observe and to see that pinky at work, just constantly curling and then coming back and fretting and then going back and curling and going back and forth that way. So that's all that we're gonna talk about here. 
feel free to chime in in the comments with your own observations or insights into Vicente Amigo's amazing guitar technique. And thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.